Hey everyone, Angelo here, homeless filmmaker in LA. Yeah, I look like shit, gaining weight, didn't shower yet today, I've been talking to people for hours. Um, been living in my car for 13 months, whatever. Um, you know, so my dad, Marco, uh, Marco Mike died um, two days ago, the 21st. And uh, he had a long, great life, and we all loved him. And I'm so glad, looking at back on videos today, that I was nice to him, I was good to him. And I knew I was doing that because I would regret it if I didn't make the effort to reach out to him. You know, I always wish I did more. Everybody does. And no matter what, there's not enough time. And I was thinking, even with Mom, I'm telling her now all the time, I love her and support her, and she's so special to me, and I can't say it enough. Even then, it's like, even with her, no matter how much time we have, there will be never be enough. And I know my dad was super proud of me. I used to be mad that he didn't remember that I was in the mental hospital, and he was visiting me years ago when I was having another dissociative uh, DPDR, depersonalization, derealization, relapse, like I'm in now, but it's not as bad. And uh, I gotta exercise. I've been lying in my car for like 14 hours a day. Um, I was mad that like he didn't remember it but then I was like I realized recently I'm like oh no that's good it's because he didn't think of me as sick he didn't think of me as bad he didn't think of me as oh depressed or whatever he was just happy with me so that's a great thing and uh, you know what does anyone do in this situation you gotta forgive yourself cannot be hard on yourself you know fortunately I did get to say those things like I love him many times and hugged him and was good to him and laughed with him. I always wish I did more, like I was more open, but, you know, think about it. What would anyone have done with my emotional tools and with my life and memories and my disorder and stuff? And so I did well way and beyond, and I know he was super proud of me. And um, I was able to include him in so much and review movies and see my house and he was a lot of fun and making fun of my mom. I was watching the video where he got a colonoscopy. Uh, I mean, after he got the colonoscopy and he had a polyp removed. And thank goodness at the time it was precancerous and he was good. He was just good to go. And I said, okay, now mom, he's got to exercise. And he was exercising and stuff. It was funny hearing him and my mom argue and he was singing. <laughs> and then uh, at the end, he was talking about going to the bathroom after the colonoscopy. He's like, yeah, it's like a bomb went off in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> My mom was like, why are you talking about this? He's like, what am I supposed to do? Recite poetry? Um, it's very hard for my mom. It's not fully even hitting me, partly because I'm in L.A., but a big reason because I'm in my depersonalization, derealization, which, thank goodness, it's not nearly as excruciating as before. Oh, my goodness. If I had to go through this last time I was sick, I swear it would have been the worst thing on earth. Now, it's yeah, it's bad, but it's not as bad the disorder this time. I, I Maybe I am recovering. I don't know. It's very sort of, it's like a rocking ship. Like when you think it's going to right itself, then it keeps going one way and another. So, But my voice even now is coarse because I've been talking to people for hours and hours a day. Old friends, uh, good old friends, some of whom I haven't talked to in a, a little while, not super long. Maybe like a year or so in some cases. And thank goodness there's certain people I just sort of know. We're on the same wavelength where it's like we just know each other. We're good. I talked to a, I talked about it yesterday. This friend uh, I knew from years ago I met um, while uh, traveling a little bit. And um, she's real nice, super nice. And um, thank goodness she has time to talk to me. Uh, she works at home and is with her husband and stuff. And he's out during the day and if she's working at home and then this week it's Christmas anyway so I don't think she has much work so I was able to talk to her my old friend Matt who uh he's in some old videos too he's in my first video he played Tyler Durden in my fight club Swede um Matt Carroll so he uh he was a friend of mine a long time before I was on YouTube and he's like a bulldog of a guy like kind of a simple guy and he's super into comics and wrestling and stuff I always thought to a detriment but who gives a shit, you know? It's what makes people different that's interesting. And um, he's living in Delaware now and working at a Wawa. And uh, I called him and he saw on Facebook my dad had died. And, you know, we talked for a good hour and he was super cool. I mean, I swear he's like a bulldog. And I said to him, you know, guys like you have to keep me accountable to not give up 
right now. It's not even so much my dad. It's That hurts. It's horrible. I'm glad some pain is coming in from that because with my dissociation, I don't even feel much. I don't feel much desires, nothing. I'm surprised I'm even able to watch videos when I do. And it's not all there. It's not the same sharpness, but um, I... Uh, I told him, you know, guys like him got to be on me to make sure, okay, like, don't give up on me. It's amazing because he grew up in my neighborhood. We didn't know each other as neighbors. We knew each other going to Boston Mall at Suncoast. First, I would see him there talking about movies, and he talked like a wild man. He's like, yeah, I fought this dude or whatever. He had a temper. And um, then we ended up working together at a movie theater at Boston Mall again got to know each other better hung out a little bit and then just over the years we just kept in touch and we were friends and we would hang out and make videos together and he worked at a gas station down the street sometimes I would get off work at Enterprise and just hang out there with it for him with an hour for an hour while it was slow at the gas station we uh talked and talked and he loved my dad he knew him he's like yeah your dad was a crazy guy I loved him he was so funny just kind of one track mind you know you, you see it in the videos he's just funny and um yeah, my mom's hurting, and I've given my mom the phone numbers to a bunch of my friends. She said, call them, you know, talk to them, don't be alone. She was talking to my aunt today on my dad's side, who was uh, married to my dad's brother, and my dad's brother died a couple of years ago, several years ago now. I think about, yeah, eight years ago, nine years ago. And my dad took it like brave, like he doesn't let stuff slow him down. He's not like me, it's like me, I... I almost feel guilty about feeling anything good after stuff like this. I remember after he wasn't even like a super close friend, but I went to high school with this guy in college and he was more a friend of my brother's, but he would come over to the house and um, he would hang out and watch TV. And I was so damn tired from working uh, at the movie theater that he would hang out in the basement with uh, my brother and I would be watching Mr. Show or something, DVDs of that. And I'd be like, oh, well, you guys do something. I'm going to go upstairs and rest. And I felt bad. He, he got killed. And uh, it was um, shocking. I, like I said, I wasn't very close to him or anything. I mean, I could call him a friend in a way just because we were nice and liked each other. And I felt bad I didn't do more with him. But it's okay. It's like, well, how do you know? You know, you'll always be saying that and always extending yourself, you know, wanting to extend more and more. And that's how I am with my mom. I'm like, even mom, I know as much as I can say I love you and support you and I want to be better and I must believe I'll get better from my depersonalization. When I get better, we'll have a career going more fully again and it's going to be tough, but at least I can be the big support for her. And uh, I, like I said in yesterday's video, I want to do a huge show for her where she's like, somebody mentioned in the comments, I forget, like Queen for a Day, where she sits in a throne. It's almost like a comedy roast, but it's like not really roasting her it may be making fun of her but not as far as the roast jokes go but really saying how great she is and showing funny clips of her and people coming up and just giving her support and hugging her and loving her so that she feels awesome but even then I know it would never be enough I could never feel and give enough to my mom thank goodness we have each other and I keep saying that to her and she's like yeah Angelo I know but it's not the same you know your dad was so big in my life they were together like 37 years and, uh, you know, of course, my mom always says we just wanted a few more years with him. I, I do, too. And um, she knew him more years than she didn't know him. I think they got together when she was like 22 or something. You know, and she said he had such a athletic body, like even without working out much, he was always strong. Even till the very end, he was strong and able to walk. And that's incredible. You know, you think how many people by 70 are hunched over and bad posture and stuff. My dad was able body. He was driving at 75, driving us 500 miles to Ohio for vacation to see his family. And we didn't even think about it, his age. So, you know, it's tough and there have been times where I felt like I don't know myself. I feel like I don't even have a dad in a way. Not that I don't, but it's, you know, I know everyone's different. and It's not anything bad. just, I don't know, like I don't know myself. I'm, you know, I'm a mess of a person in many ways, even though I've overcome quite a bit, quite a lot. I feel like shit having exercise yesterday, gaining a little weight. It's not too bad, but, you know, it's the least of my problems, except in that I got to keep up my health. And I tell my mom, I said, Mom, can you imagine... 
Like we got to support each other. Cause you, can you imagine if my health went bad right now? And she's like, Oh no, no. And I said, yeah. And obviously, and with you, can you imagine how I would react if your health was bad? She said, no, no. Yeah, obviously that's bad. So I've been talking until I'm hoarse. I called an old friend from the bar I worked at, talked to him for a good while. Cause I know he lost his mom a couple years ago, early into my job there. And that stuff always scared the shit out of me. Hearing people doing that, I'm like, oh my fucking goodness. That hits me so viscerally. Like, I can't imagine what it would be like for me. And now I'm in this dissociative state where I can't even feel myself strongly yet. Sometimes I feel myself sort of clawing out and it sucks. And it's really scary. Because what will I feel if and when I get back? But I did have a nice thought in a way today. I was thinking, you know, I could adapt this into a story. If I get back to myself and I'm a screenwriter, all this, it's powerful drama. You know, story of how someone reaches out and connects to people in the midst of all this tragedy. Certainly not the first person who would want to make a movie like this. But right now I'm still not there yet. I'm still not myself. mind in my car way too much not even because I'm depressed or anything it's the dissociation I'm scared of getting up and whatever crazy sensations are going to hit me I got a shave today I, I never let it go much beyond this and uh, I gave my dad a lot I mean I took him out to Joe's Pizza I remember one of our best memories we saw the silent film the German film uh who directed it? Um, F.W. Murnau? No, no, no. I don't, I don't remember now. Sunrise, though. A Tale of Two Humans, or A Song of Two Humans. We saw that at the AFI Silver Screen in 2012. Great mem My mom and dad and I were so thrilled to see it. The live organist. It was so funny and moving and dramatic and powerful and beautifully shot. And then we went to Bob and Edith's Diner. It's like a... In Arlington, Virginia, it's like a famous diner. Sort of, you know, long-established, 24-hour place. Where, you know, you go there for cheap, quick food that, um, you know, I've just, I mean, it's, like I said, it's just a little diner. And uh, glad we went there. It hurt like hell when I went there. I do remember, but I'm glad we did when um, I was in my disability when in 2013. And my dad did take me there at one point. And I, I think he did. And I know he took me to another diner at one time. And I was hurting so horrifically bad I couldn't eat. And uh, couldn't function. And thank goodness I came out of it, you know. Thank goodness I lived through that. Imagine the waste of potential if I had not survived that. And just thought, oh, you know, it's too horrible. And people thinking Angelo just gave in to this and succumbed. Rather than overcoming and having such a great future that I've had the last six years. Yeah, it's a lot of depression. In my videos I talk about that. I was living in Annandale. I hated it. I was broke, I was working a job that, the job wasn't bad, but I hated myself in it. But you know, I was telling my friend who worked at the bar, oh, my friend, by the way, it's the mad scientist, if you didn't know, uh, who fixed my car up and stuff. We could be like brothers, like we'd get along so well and sometimes we'd argue so, you know, stubbornly. And I told him how, you know, when I think to, back to our arguments, I just laugh, like it means nothing. You know, what could it compare to supporting each other? And he was so brave when he lost his mom. And he said, yeah, it hit him. It took a little while to hit him really hard. He was kind of just couldn't even, it didn't fa it, process it. And then he said for like a year or two, he didn't, it's not that he wasted his life by any means. It's just that like he was in this hole where he wasn't moving forward and he realized it wasn't helping him and you got to move forward. And, you know, it always hurts, but, and because he loved his mom, you know, and uh, I couldn't imagine, you know and uh yet somehow able to live a life and have a life and closest thing i can ever compare it to again when i'm not dissociated is when my first girlfriend dumped me i was crushed and i could feel that loss and grief when i was out with people like i could feel the loss of her it hurts so bad but that compelled me to start making youtube videos i wouldn't have a youtube channel if it wasn't for that and developed and it, it hurt like a motherfucker for a long time and I felt like such a loser and I I didn't really know myself yet I was still growing a lot as a person had a lot of growing to do went through another bout of illness the relapse that was horrible and but then came out of that a more grown person and better 
And I hope I come out of this one better and a filmmaker and able to honor my dad and and be a better person and reach out to people more and understand that, you know, got to appreciate each other more. And I always knew that and I, I always did. And that's why I went out of my way to film my dad and talk with him. I didn't always just film him. I just talked with him when my mom said, oh, leave him alone. He's sleeping or something. <sighs> Take a little thumbnail. And, uh, you know, my mom's hurting. and I know she'll survive and endure. It just hurts a lot. And, uh, yeah, she misses my dad. What I was saying about that girlfriend who broke up with me. I felt horrible and alone and crushed. And, you know, it took a long time. Even years later, it still hurt me. And I guess more when I'm in my right mind, it always sort of hurts me in a way and makes me a little glad. And and uh, just because, you know, I felt so strongly about, you know, my first girlfriend and um, she, uh, or what was I going to say? Um, it, it was weird. Like her memory would torture me when I was in my relapse last time, like in 2013, I was so sick thinking, oh, I, I, she was with this person who had this potential and now I can't be anything to her or anyone. It's not that I thought that she was there or anything. It's just, I knew like, oh, I'm just lost now to this. And anyone who ever liked me, you know, I'd have nothing to offer them. And even for months and maybe up to a year afterwards, I had nightmares about her, like, you know, being like, oh, goodbye, leaving me, even though it was already in the past, you know? And the first night I got my relapse um, before Thanksgiving, I had a nightmare about her then, thinking she was leaving me or like just saying goodbye, like not just goodbye to me, like going to her going away, but like goodbye, Angelo, Angelo's leaving. And yeah, it does hurt me, you know, I didn't talk more to my dad and stuff, but I did talk to him a lot and I was going out of my way to talk to him and he did love me and what could I what could I complain about you know why tor I could torture myself why does it make me feel better too does this serve me no and he certainly would never want me to be miserable so you know everybody misses him the good thing too I'm talking to my youngest brother Philip and he supported me a lot through my last relapse literally staying by my bedside when uh, I was hurting so horrifically, like I couldn't even process that someone was near me to just comfort me. And when I was pacing throughout the house 23 hours a day and um, he was there in the next room and I would wake him up to try and comfort me and he wouldn't even try and push me away and say he's tired. He would talk to me while he was exhausted. So I talked to him and he's like, you know, Angelo, we know you have this problem and stuff and it's scary and and uh, he's like, I know you have this, you know, problems dealing, you know, with people and stuff. And um, he said, you know, I accepted, like, even if you never talk to me again, because when you get better, you isolate. He's like, I, I would rather you be better and living your life and never talk to me again. You know, if that's what it took for you to be better than for you to be sick. So I said, you know, I'm going to try not to do that. It's always tough for me. And, uh. He's got a wife and, um, you know, I only met her once briefly and I was real standoffish and distant. I wasn't exactly trying to be rude, but I was trying to let him know, like, I didn't want to talk. And so, you know, she knows me, I guess she, she knows my videos and stuff and, and, um, knew my dad a lot. And so, you know, I talked to her for a while today. That helps. Cause you know, it's like, she's my sister-in-law. And I just got to be well, bottom line. I'm, I'm lucky I'm able to work on any videos and able to film this. Watching a little Red Letter Media, watching a little The Atheist Experience, watching a little, what was it, Saturday Night Live. And able to laugh somewhat and be interested. It's, it's weird. When I'm in recovery, I don't know it. Maybe I am. I don't know. Um, all I know is some feelings are hitting me stronger. That's good. 
I was working with uh, one of my favorite YouTubers on a video, and I'll share it in like a, maybe a comment sometime, a community post. The video's not up yet. But one of my favorite YouTubers for a long time, and I met him out here. He runs this beautiful art place. It's kind of like a performance space, and it's a place where artists can go, and it's like a nonprofit. It's like just pay what you want. And um, when you come in, and and they do all kinds of events there. And that's where I film the, uh, the videos of me screening videos of my mom. And um, it was so nice to work. I kept telling the guy who runs it every week, hey, let me know whenever you need a video. I'll make it for you. I'll make it. Because he hasn't made a video in a while on his YouTube channel. And um, it's the guy who does the Steve Clymer Flex Trek Whip Snake videos. And uh, it was tough to work with him the other day. It hurt me to edit at the computer. I was editing a video with him. But I'm glad. And he's super nice about this. And he like I told him my dad passed. He gave me a big, huge, long hug. And let me cry on his shoulder. And I've been lonely and stuff and being in my car and everything. And I've had friends here supporting me, letting me be over. And, um, yeah, I was working on a video with him yesterday. It was a little easier. I was still taking time whenever I could to talk to my mom and my brother. Or who was I talking to? No, mainly my mom, I think. And, oh, another friend. It wasn't my brother last night. And it was nice to be there and hang out and work on my laptop and have company, not just being at the library doing it. Although I got to be brave and just keep working. Why would I, you know, want to stop? I feel guilty about enjoying anything when stuff like this happens. When that guy in college uh, was killed, um, I felt guilty about enjoying things. I was sitting there watching a movie when I heard and I yelled, what the fuck? And I sat down and tried to finish the movie, but I felt guilty enjoying it. And just enjoying my life. And I cried in the shower the next day. And uh, I went to work feeling bad. And I, I was okay, basically. But, you know, I just thought, how sad, man. The guy was so young. Such a nice guy. Good-looking guy. His parents were must have been hurting so bad. I couldn't even bring myself. I wanted to sort of... Uh, I wish we became face, Facebook friends when we could. I saw his profile and I didn't back then. This was very early into Facebook. 2005, I just joined a few months earlier. And, um, I couldn't even bring myself to send a card to his parents, you know, uh, I don't know if I would have said, you know, good things or it would have been hurtful to read from me, but I felt so bad thinking, man, what a loss of potential. A young guy, he would have made some woman happy. He could have had a great job, had great friends. And, you know, that it did get easier with time. And I, I suppose in a way it always does. I'm feeling that weird warm sensation in my leg right now. So it's good. It reminds me I have a disorder. It's a sensory disorder. It's not permanent, I hope. And uh, just got to be strong right now. My mom needs me. I need her. I tell my brother Philip, you know, it's good that we're talking. I'm glad we can talk, and I, I'm going to try not to isolate if and when I recover. Everyone's saying they know I'll recover. I'm the only person saying, well, if I do. Literally everyone I know is saying, yeah, I'm definitely going to recover. And part of that is being brave and actually doing stuff. When I was recovering last time from my relapse, um, and it's starting to hurt about my dad more, you know, because as I feel more like myself, it does hurt more thinking, oh, I wish I could tell him again I love him. And I did in his last few minutes. And I know he heard me. You know, and I know he loved me and was proud of me. And the videos are so funny. And when I watch the videos, I'm just laughing, you know. I watched where he had a colonoscopy three years ago. And I was glad to take him to the hospital and stuff and get it done. I was all worried about that. Not terribly worried, but a little worried. And he had a non-cancerous polyp removed, precancerous. So thank goodness he was good to go. And then I had him exercise and told my mom to get him to eat healthy. And then it was funny at the end, he was talking to my mom about um, going to the bathroom after the colonoscopy. There's music next to me. I'm going to roll up the window. And um, he was saying, uh, and if you look at my community posts, it's on there. I just posted it on my YouTube page. He said, uh, wow, it's like a, you know, I went to the bathroom. He's like, it's like a bomb went off in Saudi Arabia or something. 
I forget if I told this early in the video or not. I don't know, but um, I might have told it to my mom earlier today. So, you know, an important thing is we have to be brave. I, I don't want to beat myself up over anything. I want to be well, and it's okay to grieve. That's the best, that's the most okay thing to do. It's starting to rain, it's annoying. And uh, talk to people a lot and just be okay with myself. And hopefully I am coming back and getting better. And then, then I can really, once I'm really better and I got to make some money, then I can go be with my mom and visit her. And Because right now I need to be better first. I can't miss a bunch of treatments. And she said that. She's like, no, Angelo, there's nothing here. It's dreary. It's so sad. And you can't do anything here. And, um, by the way, she said the funeral, and this is not surprising me at all, and burial and stuff, it's going to cost $11,000. And I said, uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. When I took an insurance sales job for 10 days and in life insurance, I learned all about the average cost of a funeral. And I learned it was about 10000 So that makes sense. I think it was about 10000 And, uh... So I don't know, I'm thinking about, you know, should we do a GoFundMe? Uh, this is not the time to be vain about, oh, we don't want money or something. It's like, yeah, should we do that? I'm thinking about it. Because my dad was too old to get life insurance by the time anyone had thought to get it for him. And uh, that's fine. We were glad to have him, though. So, But yeah, it's going to be expensive. Um, you know, the military doesn't give free funerals except to the very highest ranking people. Uh, and that's something I also learned when I was getting my um, insurance license. My body's going like numb just from talking so much. I've been talking and talking for hours today. I talked to my brother's wife. I talked to my mom. I talked to my friend Karen, uh, the one I knew from years ago, traveling a little bit and uh, stayed friends over the years. Gotta be good to myself too. And not retreat from this pain but carry on like oh my dad would want this for me he would want me to be good he would want to see me out exercising and thank goodness I had a dad like that who I was clear like he only wanted the best for me like he didn't see me as sick when I was sick and he didn't care about that and he supported me definitely but um you know uh thank goodness for that and um that I filmed him. So, you know, life will go on. And I tell my mom, you know, nothing makes it easy. I'm not trying to trivialize anything about it. It's just that, unfortunately, lots of people go through this. And somehow they do survive and be well. And life's never the same. But we can still be well and go forward with him. You know, with his memory. And uh, be proud. And hopefully I get back to myself and, you know... My career isn't just a career, obviously. It's how I relate to the world, how I relate to myself and my mom. And I want to give my mom the most biggest, extravagant show imaginable. Maybe at the Sun Space, where I'm working on these videos with my uh, favorite YouTuber. And it was kind of like therapy for me to work with him. Last night, I was able to work with him all right. The other day, editing, it was painful because of my disorder. <sighs> so, yeah... Uh, like to do that for her, and I'm so glad my dad could already see that. And there's so many videos of him. You just type Angelo's dad in YouTube. I was going to say in the laptop, YouTube. My videos come up. Again, his name is Marco Mike. He was 88 years old, Air Force veteran for like 25 years, I think, maybe 30. I don't know. He was like a sergeant major. That's what it was. I think I said sergeant master before. He was a singer, opera singer. He loved music. He composed music. Um, he, uh, he loved movies and plays and shows and, you know, he was a good guy and I'm glad for that. So, um, just got to keep pushing on and being brave and like I said, I'm talking to my mom a lot and, uh, I want us all to be well, you know, I want us all to be doing well and thank goodness he was around a long time. He would have never lived as long if it wasn't for my mom's support and my support, you know, telling her, Hey, feed him well, get him to exercise. Thank goodness. He wouldn't have made it that long, you know? So he did, fortunately, we can say that. He had a great long life. 
um, you fathom 88 years, you know, the stuff he's seen and experienced. So, um, yeah, we all got to be brave and keep moving on and, you know, all be good to each other and get each other healthy and, you know, take care of each other, keep each other going as much as possible, you know. All right, everyone. Appreciate it.